Jesus spoke of a time when there would be upon the earth distress. There's an urgency in the hour in which we live. Almost every newspaper screams from its pages, the harvest is ripe. Materialism, politics, drugs, alcohol, sex, money, false philosophies and religions, and all of them fail. Millions of people are searching for answers to the crushing problems and fears that they face today. That ought to give us a new urgency to declare the one answer. I'm convinced that the greatest act of love we can ever perform for another person is to tell him about God's love for him in Christ. The words of Jesus challenge me as never before. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, they're already white unto harvest. Father, it's me again. It's Omari again. Yes, it's me again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 ye
Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we pray that tonight we all might be conscious that thine eye is upon us. If God can see the sparrow fall, if he has the hairs of our head numbered, we know that he watches us, that he loves us, that he cares for us, and we are told in thy word that he cares for us so much that he sent his only begotten son to the cross to die that we might find forgiveness of our sins. We pray tonight that thy Holy Spirit will draw all men unto the Savior, for we ask it in his name. Amen. And the disciples, now the word disciple means learner or follower, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now Paul and Silas had been at Antioch preaching for many months. They'd been holding evangelistic crusades, getting hundreds of people to receive Christ. They had established a great church. And in derision, the people round about them began to call them Christ One, Christ Followers, Christians. That's where the word Christian was first coined. Followers Follow. of Jesus Christ. Hey, see so many people trapped in a web of sin. And it seems like there is no faith for them. Immorality is the order of the day And the biggest of them all is a sexual sin Said it's time we understand the sneaking plans of the enemy To get the minds bound by fornication or not adultery Uses the eyes to normalize to photograph the open appetites of endless possibilities Like multiple partners and unfaithful spouse Homosexuality rising fast the most Making this generation one of a kind Cause flesh is so high I can't even feel Christ But I won't let this thing stay my faith in God and try to deceive the body and God I stand So all my old friends please understand That I'm sticking to the master's plan Situation we facing, you we put faith in. Celibacy is what we celebrating. Evolution we not even debating. Lord, so no matter if all of we friend them can't hold pan dating. Up on you we keep on waiting. We stand for you and we not breaking. Lord, so God who we represent, we make it evident. We serve God to fear, not intelligence. So may nobody persuade you to eloquence or education. Make you stop so reverent. So make them keep on talk. Make them keep on laugh. We just a keep on walk. And we are pressed to the mark. And the higher calling we, we are talk. Say no matter how the nation come, and I give up just no. I will never What is a Christian? What is a follower of Jesus Christ? Oh, there are many people that have an idea that if you're born in a Christian country that you're a Christian. Many people have an idea if you have Christian parents, you're automatically a Christian. But the Bible says you cannot inherit Christianity. It's not by flesh and blood, nor the will of man. There is nothing that you can do to automatically make yourself acceptable to the kingdom of God. You can go to church. You can live a decent life. 
You can be a good, moral, virtuous person, but that does not make you a Christian. You can have uh, Christian characteristics, but that doesn't make you a Christian. There are thousands of people in America tonight that think they're Christian, but in actuality, they are not Christian in the narrowest sense of the term. They've never been born again. They've never received Christ into their hearts. And if they died, they would not go to heaven. Now, a Christian is a person that has had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. God's destiny, worldly pleasures come before me Keeping my mind on you daily Cannot get lost on this journey But these struggles try to chain me Don't wanna let me see your glory But I'm fighting to be holy So I hide and be lonely Jesus, will you be my company? Am I pleasing your Lord? Please tell me I know I asked you before But I'm feeling insecure Can't get enough of you, so Lord I am just hurting you for more Lord, you brought me from so far And I just can't so turn right now now tonight I want to speak on the subject How to live the Christian life How to live the Christian life Some conking, but to know I pick up the conting. Some young girl, but them want conking. When me and you know that's a dumb thing. All the pan on mind is humping. That's why so much less on a flunking. To the rang, rhythm on a jumping. To the rang, beat on a heart pumping. Christian, stop on a grumbling. Well, Jesus, hype on a bunting. Stop putting my back and up front him. Start seeking him like you are hunting. Every day, you get up and you need him. Give thanks in life and a reading. God call you know, for me leading. How me be turn me back when him got through the crucifix. A Christian is a person that has made a decision for accepting Christ as Savior and Lord. You've accepted Him, you've committed your life to Him. Now the first thing is, a Christian is a person that has made a choice. You've made a decision, you've had an encounter with the living God, you've received Christ into your heart. That is the first step in being a Christian. I'm not ashamed to tell the world that I am what I am. I am a son of the most high. I am that I am. I choose not to stand alone because I'm not an iron. I represent in the king, the king, the lion. I had the word in my heart so I won't be confused. Satan had me bound for so long and now I am loose. By my fleshly desire, by my carnal behavior, enjoy that last peace cause now my body will give that pleasure. Has that happened to you? Has there come a moment in your life when you repented of your sins? When you acknowledged that you're a sinner? When you said, oh God, I'm willing to turn from my sins? And then by faith, you received Christ as your Lord and Savior? Now that's the starting point. Oh, there are many people that are trying to live the Christian life, but Christ doesn't live in their heart. Because a Christian is a person in whom Christ dwells. The moment you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and gives you a new moral nature. And you have power and you have strength to live the Christian life.
Well, no one can live the Christian life until first he's been to the cross and received Christ as Savior. Christ died on the cross. Christ shed his blood for our sins. But you must come and receive Christ. That is an act of your will. Yes, I believe, but that's not enough. Emotionally, you might have had an emotional experience, but that's not enough. By your will, you must say, I will receive Christ. I will give my life to Christ. But then, after that, something else must take place. The second thing is, a change must take place in your life. The Bible says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. There must be a definite change in the way you live. A change in your attitude. A change in your attitude toward God. You must love God supremely. You must put God first in all the choices and decisions of your life. There must be a change in your attitude toward yourself. No longer are you egocentric. No longer are you selfish. No longer is everything done just for self and to please self. Cinemates of everything, you know.
must also be a change in your attitude towards your neighbor. You must love your neighbor as yourself. And so there must be a change in your life. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And if there is no evidence of a change in your life, then you better check up to see whether you're really a Christian or not. Because if your life hasn't been changed, if you're not bearing the fruit that God gives you when you come to Christ, then you better start doubting whether you really met Christ or not. Because the child of God, a change has taken place. Jesus said, by their fruit shall ye know them. By their fruits. What are the fruits? Today, the fruits of the Spirit of love and joy I and peace and long-suffering and all the others. Are you I living the Christian life? Have you given yourself to Jesus Christ? Do you know that you've had this encounter with Him and has a change taken place in the way you live and in your attitude? If not, you may be living in a food paradise. You're a Christian, but you're not, because a Christian is a person that has received Christ and a change has taken place in the way he lives. Thirdly, a Christian is a person that has accepted a challenge. The challenge of Christ. Christ says, if any man will come after me, let him deny self, take up his cross and follow me. Christ also offers a challenge. He says, unless you're willing to accept my challenge and to live for me, you cannot be my follower. I ask you tonight, are you sure that you're a Christian? Are you sure that your sins are forgiven? Are you sure if you died, you'd go to heaven? Are you sure that you're ready to meet God? In the strictest sense of the term, I ask you tonight, are you a Christian? Are you sure of it? If I had a doubt in my heart tonight that I was ready to meet God, you couldn't drag me out of Madison Square Garden till I'd settled it. But how to live the Christian life? That's another thing. How to live the Christian life? All right. About 14, I think it was 14 years ago, I got married. For about two years, I wooed my wife. And I'll tell you, that was some doing. 
to win her. I worked hard for two years. Finally, we stood up in front of the minister. Now, I could have admired my wife, which I did, but I still wasn't married. I could have thought she was lovely and beautiful and believed in her, but that didn't make me married to her. I had to stand in front of the minister, and he said, Wilt thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife? And I said, I will. Yeah. Yeah, man. So why do some people think they need so many It really bothers me. What is that you with Emily? Oh, no, no. Mothers are crying, oh, what they need is a your love. Oh, ja, come and come and I'm a blessing of your love, yeah. Come and I'm a blessing of your love, yeah. Nah, and tell me why do we fall in love? And then he pronounced this man and wife. Then will we marry a public decision? I came publicly before a congregation of people with witnesses on every hand and took Ruth to be my wedded wife. I said I will. It was a matter of the will. Just believing in her wasn't enough. Just going and having Sunday dinner at her folks' home wasn't enough. I tell you, man, it's got the going blind and they don't see the sun and they won't stop to their cards and they don't want to change the Just loving her wasn't enough. I had to say I will. And just believing in Christ is not enough. The Bible says the devil believes in Christ. Just saying he's a wonderful person is not enough. Just going to Sunday dinner at the church is not enough. You must, by an act of your will, say, I will receive him as my own Savior and Lord. Have you done that? But then I found out something that a lot of married, a lot of kids don't think about. The ceremony was only the beginning. Now when you come and accept Jesus Christ, that's only the beginning. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, you live together, you work together, you plan together, your life meshes together. And marriage is work. And if you want to grow, you must follow certain rules. To grow in Christ. Now, the Bible teaches that you start out, after you receive Christ, you start out as a tiny baby. Just a tiny little baby. You're not a full-grown Christian. You walk in church on Sunday morning after receiving Christ and sometimes 
some of the Christians will say, I wonder if he's going to last. Wonder if the poor little thing will hold out. You shouldn't do that. You should welcome these new people and love them and encourage them and help them that they might grow. You're supposed to grow, but here's the tragedy in the Christian church today, the terrible tragedy. When my little boy said his first word, he said, Dada. At least I think that's what he said. I, I was told that's what he was saying. Dada. At we were thrilled to death. He had learned to talk. Dad, dad. Reaching but out suppose to all the 20 years the from now, he would still come up to me and say, Dad, dad. Oh, mama, 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 yeah. There'd be something wrong. And yet there are many of you that same way. Oh, mama, 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 mama. You haven't grown a bit. Mama, you're my sunshine. You're still going around after 20 years of being a Christian saying, Dad, dad. Mama, you're my sunshine. Mama, you're my sunshine. You've been stunted. I treat you better than the Cinderella in my you life. You have My sunshine. My. You see the man I am today. Mama, owe it all unto you. Me now go stick to God tell ya. You know my love is pure and true. And that's why I wanna put a smile. of Christ. Now some quick rules. First, the first rule is one in prayer. We have to spend time every day in prayer. The disciples came up to Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us 
to pray. Now, you have to learn to walk, don't you? You have to learn to ride a bicycle, don't you? You learn to ride a horse? All right, you have to learn to pray. You learn to pray in the same way. Lord, teach us to pray. And there's hope in Jesus. Just a word. Just a word. Time used to criticize, why can't you use the time and pray? Ay, the time we used to fuss and fight, many have gone astray. Yeah, the time we tend to wise, why can't we just turn to God? So you and I can be right in this sight. The time we used to gossip, why can't we just evangelize? Yeah, the time we used to pull each other down, why can't we just rise? The time we used to complain, why can't we just seek God's face? On our knees, hold the faith, cause He hears when we pray. A word of prayer, a word of prayer, a word of prayer can change His nation. A word of prayer, a word of prayer, a word of prayer can heal frustration. Just a word, just a word. Just a word to my father. Now remember, yes, in living word, this Christian life, word, you don't have to live it alone. To my father, yes. Divided we fall, but united we can stand. Ay, no man stands alone. The Holy Spirit no lives in island. Why can't we do it Jesus' way? Why can't we humble and obey His words? Get on your knees and pray. A word of prayer, a word of prayer can change this nation. A word of prayer, a word of prayer, a word of prayer can heal frustration. Just a word, just a word, just a word to my father. Yes, a word, just a word, a word to my father. Yes. When things get tough and times get rough, all you need is a word of prayer. When the bills them do, you don't know what to do. All you need is a word of prayer. When times get hard, just trust the Lord. All you need is a word of prayer. All we need is the word, God word, the only word. A word of prayer, a word of prayer, a word of prayer can change this nation. A word of prayer, a word of prayer, a word of prayer can heal frustration. Just a word, just a word. Just a word to my father, yes, a word, just a word, a word to my father, yes. A word of prayer, a word of prayer, a word of prayer can change this nation. A word of prayer, a word of prayer, a word of prayer can heal frustration. Just a word, just a word, just a word to my father. The moment you receive Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you to give you the power, the strength, the wisdom, the courage to live the Christian life. If you're going to live the Christian life, there must be discipline in your life. It's a way of discipline. The Christian life is a way of renunciation and hardship. Jesus said, narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life. The Bible tells us that a Christian is a soldier who must suffer hardship. Thou therefore into your hardness as a good soldier, Jesus Christ, said Paul to Timothy. The Christian is likened to a boxer who masters his own body and practices self-restraint. And all the way through the New Testament, you read words like this describing the Christian life. Fight. Wrestle. Run. Work. Suffer. Endure. Resist, agonize. We have to discipline our minds, the things that we read, the things that we think. No evil thoughts are to come into our minds, and if they do, they have to be expelled immediately. Our minds are to be disciplined so that we don't spend our time reading trash. And literature that does not develop the mind and develop the soul. Oh, watch 
watching the wrong types of television programs. We don't throw our time away. We don't let our minds run idle. Our minds are disciplined. Our tongues are disciplined too. Put to death all of these the New Testament words describing the Christian life. It is to be a disciplined life. every day, these little jewels, they can never be recalled, they have to be dedicated to Christ, this body of mine is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in me, the Bible says that with my body there is to be self-control, self-control, meekness, blessed are the meek, said Jesus, that's what meekness means, it means temperance, self-control, I'm to live a disciplined life. Oh, today, how little discipline we have in the way we live. How little discipline we have in our Christian experience and our Christian lives. And that's the reason thousands of Christians are failing. There is no discipline. There must be discipline. And then next in the Christian life, there is the church. You've heard of Robinson Crusoe Christians, haven't you? Trying to live solitary Christian lives. I tell you, the Bible doesn't know anything about it.
like the blood in my veins As the earth needs the sun You are the only one Like the birds need the sky And sigh to my eyes As my lungs need air As my soul needs prayer the Christian fellowship is not optional, it's essential, it's commanded. We are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. The Bible teaches that the church is like a vine with its many branches. It's like living stones built together, members of the body of Christ all knit together. and give it everything we have in the work of the church. The church is to worship together. It's a place where we give our tithes and offerings to the work of the Lord. All across America, let's go to church. God has commanded it. And I want to tell you, you cannot live a victorious Christian life and have the peace and the joy in your heart without faithfulness in the church. Stand with your church. And then last of all, the Christian is to witness for Christ. Now, how do you witness? You witness by the way you live. The smile, the courtesy, the thoughtfulness. You're witnessing for Christ. And if you live a changed life, in which Christ is living in you and radiating out through you, other people will be attracted to you and they'll say, what's your secret? And you'll say, I know Jesus Christ. have an opportunity to witness for Christ. Witness in the home. Witness in your daily work. We are not to be slothful in business, but servants in spirit, serving the Lord. We are to witness by the way we perform our work. We are to work faithfully. If you're a worker and a pastor, you're to do it faithfully. As unto the Lord, you don't work just for the employer. You don't work just for the union to make them happy. You work for the Lord.
an employee. You work for Christ. He is the one that you're responsible to if you're a Christian. The Bible says that Christians are pilgrims here. We're ambassadors for Christ. The Bible says we're a peculiar people set apart under Christ. And we're to be shining witnesses in a perverse and wicked generation. Oh, give your life to Jesus Christ and let him live in you and be a shining witness for Christ. Become salt in your community. Become a light in your community. Let the people know where you stand for Christ. Live a clean and honest and pure and wholesome life. Are you a Christian? Are you living that kind of a life? Oh, I'm not asking do you have Christian influence. I'm not asking are you a member of a certain church. I'm asking you tonight, have you had this encounter with Christ? Has this change taken place in your life? Have you accepted the challenge of following Christ? Are you living a faithful life under Him? If not, can start tonight, right now. You gotta let it go. Try not to think about it. You just gotta let it go. Try not to think about it. You gotta let it go. Let it go. Float away. All that is troubling you today.
right now. You can say, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I want Christ to come in and forgive my sins and my faith. I want to follow and serve him. He will. I want to know my sins are forgiven. I want to know that I'm going to heaven. I want a change in my life and in my home. I want a change in the place I work. I want to become a light for Christ. I want to become a witness for Christ. I want the joy of living for Christ. How many people claim to be Christian, but they don't have any peace in their life? There's no joy. There's no love in their life. There's no walk with Christ. There's no thrill. They get angry quickly. They're sensitive. They're jealous. They're filled with pride. I tell you, the Christian life was never meant to be that way. Give your life to Christ and make sure that he lives in your heart.
Some of you give your life to Christ tonight for the first time. Others of you can come and rededicate your life and say tonight, I'm going to surrender my life to Christ anew and afresh. I'm going to give myself to him. All over this place, God is speaking to hundreds and thousands of people. All of you that will come tonight and receive Christ, and say, I'm going to begin. I give myself to him. I come to the foot of his cross, renouncing my sins and failures. I'm coming and give myself to him as Savior and Lord. I'm going to ask you to come. The only hope for America is Jesus Christ. My hope has been used in many countries, and hundreds and thousands of people have received Christ as Savior while not in America. I think that it's going to be a tremendous time of evangelism, and I hope that the people that are seeing us right now will make sure that their church is participating. My hope is not centered in this world. My hope is centered in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. 